Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Rock Life Podcast. Today, tune in as we are talking about circumcision of the heart. What does that even mean? Well, we're going to talk about that. We're going to discuss this past weekend's service. My name is Antonio. We're so grateful that you are here. I am here with Pastor Dan. Hey, everybody. Uh, so again, Rock Life Podcast, like, subscribe, comment. Uh, we love the encouragement. I, I, I'm, I'm convinced people come up to us because we ask for the encouragement, and I, I, I always get encouraged. I got some encouragement at the back door. Yeah, Someone I, told me, happening. I will see you on the podcast. That's so. right. I, mean, I know some people that... They say they are waking up to the notification. Wow. Uh, and so they like getting that notification. That's a nice way to wake yeah. up. Friday mornings at 8 o'clock. Shout out to our guy Ian who makes sure that happens. Uh, these release uh, we're discussing the previous weekend service. Pastor Dan, happy, well, does it matter what day of the week it is? Happy whatever day of the week it is. Whatever today. day we're filming, yeah. Happy yeah. happy morning. It's been a good morning so far. Yeah. It's a great We day. got some good news. Yeah. Well, and well, should we share it with our, well, our listeners? Well, let's talk about our it. Our watchers? Well, <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, the subject of the good news is dun, da, da, dun, the well. The well. The well is producing an amazing amount of water. We yeah. we were quoted. I got this text from Pastor Brian this morning. We were quoted for 150 gallon mm-hmm. per minute well. Yeah. Now per minute. Okay. That's a lot of gallons. Uh, and then um, we dug down and we're praying for a 200 mm-hmm. per minute gallon. Yeah. And then it's producing, here it is, and this will be well said <laughs> when I say it. I, 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 I can't. <laughs> so, so just so our listeners yeah. know, it, there should be like a, a, a like post. A yeah, we, yeah. We, we almost need that little ding, bottom counter. number count. Yeah, how many well, how many well puns, puns yeah, we can get in. that are well said. Yeah. <laughs> And this is not a well of a tale. This is <laughs> this is real. Okay. Well, let's just go ahead the, and do it. The real amount of water coming out of our well is 250 plus gallons per minute. That's so, right. I mean, I that's yeah, praise that's, the Lord, you know. I, I just think it's a prophetic statement Come on. of the fruitfulness of the land. Well. And yeah. <laughs> you're getting you're getting it. <laughs> yeah, you'd never get into a pun joke. With me, that's I. I think you're the Dad king joke, of the puns. I mean, wow. Yeah, I mean the cheesiness uh, just well. it, it pours out of me. <laughs> it just oozes like a well like <laughs> watered garden. It's a it's a yeah. Well. You you were going there. You spring up a well. I mean, it's it it was. Oh man, but we we are celebrating. That's because right. Because it's something that we've been believing for. I know our project did get extended, so we are grateful for our Absolutely. church members that come and they've been. It was supposed to be a two week project. And we had to close one of the entryways, and everyone, for as far as I know, um, has has come in nicely, and then uh, yeah, figured out how to leave. We actually had to move the line for trunk or treat because right. of that too, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, that's that's a little interesting this year, right. but I, it's gonna it's gonna work out. It'll yeah. be a, a well planned event. There, <laughs> exactly. And again, it's a it's a uh, it was a stewardship uh, for the church because yeah what Pastor Brian is telling me based on the amount that we will be able to uh, fully be in compliance with the city requirements, we'll yep. fully be able to irrigate all of our landscaping Oh yeah, uh, uh, because of the efficiency of the well, which I know we, we kind of had hit a, a, we were between a rock and a hard space, literally in yeah. the ground, right? Yeah. We, we going through gravel, trouble. going through some, some hard, hard rocks. I mean, y- y- you can just look right. at the, the area around us yeah. and see, how stony the ground is. Mm-hmm. I mean, this it's yeah. it's a. We've that often knows. said that it is a picture in the mm-hmm. natural of yeah. what we're working with in the in the spirit. Right. You know, trying to go through right. the stony ground of the heart. Um, just because there's there's a lot. It's it's a tough place to minister. Right. San Bernardino in the yeah. Inland Empire. Um, I was just reading an article uh, that was sent to me about Governor Newsom is releasing the CHP to help out with our problems of crime. Oh, in wow. San Bernardino, the wow. city. Specifically our city. Specifically the city. Wow. Just because, I mean, it's like in in many crimes and all that kind of stuff, it's the yeah. worst area for that, mm-hmm. if not one of the top yeah. in the nation. Right. And so Governor Newsom released it just like some of the larger cities. Wow. And, um, and, and I mean, like, we're grateful. Yeah. We're grateful that we get the extra help. Yeah. Um, we definitely need it for our city. But that's the physical picture that we see when yeah. we're digging and we're hitting all these rocks yeah. is that there's a whole lot of stony hearts, you know, and, uh, and Hey, what a transition right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Removing yes. the stony heart and yeah. putting in the heart of flesh and that's right. cutting away 
yeah. uh, the circumcision of the stony heart, man. Yeah, that, this past weekend we are continuing in Romans chapter 2. You can follow along. You can jump in at any moment. Maybe this is your first time tuning in with us. That's okay. We're in Romans chapter 2, getting towards the end of the chapter. Yeah, um, actually hit the last verses. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. So, But we're probably going to ruminate there a little bit. I, I think I got uh, probably a second part okay. on circumcision of the heart, yeah. um, just looking at the content and looking at... Uh, I think we did a good job this past week. Yeah explaining the subject, yeah. but now the how-tos are coming to mm-hmm. us. we got to have the how-tos, yeah. you know? And, okay, that's that was going to be some of my question today, and I, don't, I was thinking, it was like, oh, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Right. So we can kind of camp out in this defining the cutting away, right? Sure. So again, in circumcision, we know, and you explained... We had the little ones cover ears in our main ser- in our main service. Uh, uh, I think we kept it PG. <laughs> you right, know, absolutely. We, I mean, and and really, the, the a cutting away right is what circumcision meant, and then we kind of paralleled into the circumcision of our own hearts. Yes. And what I what I really love about these these passages in scripture is that it's it's kind of taking away the dryness. And I I want to read this quote properly. Okay. Um, that you said, Pastor Dan, that really really hit. Religion and rituals are nothing without the reality of faith. Yes. Uh, and that is kind of summarizes where we were talking about with what circumcision can be. Now, we know circumcision was part of not necessarily the law. or Was it the law? So it was the, the covenant that was given to Abraham right. for his generations. Mm-hmm. But, yes, it was it was now brought in under right. the law. Right. And so that's where this coming weekend and part two, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll talk about... Uh, law versus faith, right? And how Abraham was approved in faith before the sign was given. Yeah. Um, but then the children of Israel under the law mm-hmm. now are circumcising their children. Yeah. And, and the difference that came there, you know, because it, you know even Moses had to yeah come back and circumcise his children. There was mm-hmm. a, there was a point where his children weren't circumcised, mm-hmm. you know, and so people get away from from the law mm-hmm. that was prescribed yeah. and as well from the faith that is given to us you yeah. know and distributed to us because it was supposed to be for abraham's generations right yeah. and that was the covenant before the law ever ever showed up but mm-hmm. yeah i mean it was it was something that that marked them as god's people mm-hmm. right right well and so it makes me think you know for many of us today being that we are carnal beings or fleshly beings uh who are trying to walk in the spirit um but our, our daily we face this not trying to live uh, according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Right. And um, but oftentimes we find ourselves we can go in efforts to do the spirit thing, walking through motions of ritual, of sure. religion. Yeah. Um, and what we saw in these scriptures is that really. There's the element of faith that has to be involved, of course. Yeah. Um, because I, what I think of when I think of religion and ritual is that it often ends up in what I call high horsity, right? People on high <laughs> horses um, like or self-righteousness um, because, well, I'm doing X, Y, and Z. Right. And it's our human efforts to gauge our effectiveness, right? We sure. often, many of us, like checklists and checking boxes and knowing like we're doing good things, right? We have our sleep gauges. We have our calorie counters we have our heart rate thing because we want to have a good pulse right. pun intended on how it is that we're doing and i don't think that's bad but when we approach our spiritual life as yeah. in checking boxes uh so I, I really felt like you you really hit on that this weekend when we're talking about now the tearing away of those actions what was the thought coming into that you know you, know, you, you said something that i want to address you said tearing and really mm-hmm. it's more cutting that's right and, and i think that's where the intentionality of mm-hmm. circumcision right the, the, it's precision oh, yeah. tearing is like it happens yeah you don't want to cutting you go in there intentionally yeah there's there's more intent and and definitely you know um th- there's there's a difference there in the sense of of i am making a concerted effort in this area and uh it had to be precise mm-hmm. it made a scar you know all those things and then we talked about the reminder that was there and and as a pastor as we give people ways of growth and things like that there, there has to be the emphasis on faith mm-hmm. that the action and the activity produces faith That's so good. for instance uh, when we talk about the the ritual and the religion right mm-hmm. religion will tell you and ritual will tell you that you have to go to church Mm-hmm. You have to be baptized. Right. 
you have to memorize scripture or, mm-hmm. or read scripture. You have to pray. Yeah. Um, you know, and Jesus oftentimes talked to the people about these things because he said, you know, don't let don't let it be vain repetitions. Right. And he said that people aren't going to be heard for their many words. Yeah. And they make a long prayer for pretense. Now, does that mean that God is against long prayers? Right. No, not at all. I mean, there's been times where I've prayed short prayers yeah. and, and it's been very rote and religion, yep. you know, yep. God bless this food to my body. Amen. Yep. And I didn't right. really mean it. You know, right. it was like. It was just God because I knew I had to pray yeah. and, and eat my food. There's mm-hmm. been other times, though, that I prayed long prayers and really meant every word. Right. And and that's where we have to watch our hearts mm-hmm. in the midst of those things. Because as a pastor, we tell people, read your Bible, pray, go to church, yeah. be baptized, all those things, right? right? But if it's just religious motions, mm-hmm. it'd be better for you to, to not do that. Right. And get into faith right. and then do the things, the works that Abraham did. Jesus was constantly saying, if you were Abraham's children. Yeah. It's not just about the outward circumcision. If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works that he did. Mm-hmm. Why? Because they were from a heart of faith. Yeah. Yep. Right? What were the works Abraham did? Uh, right. That was the fruit that was produced exactly. when you planted the seed of faith. Exactly. So we, we know that Abraham, the work that he did, okay, what, what was the works Abraham did? Well, first things, the first time we meet Abraham, what's he doing? He's leaving his homeland. Right. Why was he doing that work? Right. Because God spoke to him. Mm-hmm. He heard it. He believed it. Yeah. And then he, right. he left. So if we're not careful, our flesh will go, oh, Abraham left his homeland. What if God didn't tell you to leave your homeland? But exactly. you're just tr- doing the religious or ritualistic. Right. right. Same thing with circumcision. Right. Uh, same thing with tithing. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, a lot of people get upset about tithing and they say, well, that tithing is not a, a New Testament concept. It comes yeah. from the law, this and that. And, and they just haven't read their Bible. Mm-hmm. And maybe they're just ignorant or don't understand. Yeah about the book of Genesis yeah. and uh, about Abraham. Mm-hmm. And and again, Jesus said, if you were Abraham's children, you'd do the works. Well, we're tithing. Right. Abraham tithed. Yeah. We're tithing. Why did Abraham tithe? It was, again, a faith response mm-hmm. that he gave after a victory right. to the representative of God, mm-hmm. and he did it in faith. There was no prescription. Yeah. There was no nobody telling Abraham, hey, give 10%. No, yeah. he gave a tithe of the spoil of war. Right. To Melchizedek, mm-hmm. which means, if you translate it, king of righteousness. He was the king of Jerusalem, which means he was the king of yeah. peace, right? right? Yep. Because uh, it was Salem, king yep. of Salem. And, and so he was the king of peace, king of righteousness. This guy obviously is representing Jesus Christ, right? right? He, if he's not Jesus himself, some yeah. people believe it was a, wow. a Christophany, yeah. you know, yeah. an appearance of Jesus in the Old Testament. If it's not him, he, at the very least, he's a shadow of Christ, right? right. Yeah. And, and so he brings out bread and wine. Mm-hmm. Communion, right, right. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, the the right. the, oh, the, yeah. the all the foreshadowing, all the parallels all the, and yeah. The, yeah, types and shadows, everything that we're seeing, it, it's like, hey, that's Jesus, mm-hmm. right? And, yeah. and so we're seeing that. Now, I'm not saying that I believe that that's Jesus. And there was one point I taught it that way, but then I thought, well, maybe it's not, you know. Right. But even in Hebrews, it talks about how he doesn't have any sort of genealogy, so mm-hmm. that it shows that he has no beginning and no end. We right. don't know his death yeah. date or any of that kind of stuff. And he doesn't have any parent mm-hmm. parental, you know, lineage or any of that kind of stuff. No ancestry, no no descendants. So in, in many ways, yeah. if it's not Jesus, he's a picture of Jesus mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. just blatant out right. there in front of us, right? Yeah. And, and so here's Abraham, and what does he do after a, a, a victory? We know that he gave mm-hmm. 10% of the spoil to Melchizedek. Now, he wouldn't give it—King of Sodom's asking for the people. and says, yeah, you keep all the money. Yeah. Abraham says, I'm not giving you nothing, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and, and he, he said, let the young men that, w- that were here take their portion. Right. They deserve it, but, yeah. you know, I, I don't—I'm not— yeah. Taking anything yeah. from you, and I'm not giving you the people because I don't want you to say I made Abraham rich. Right. But who does he give to? The representative of God. Right. And he does that by faith. Mm-hmm. We're Abraham's children. How? Yeah. By faith. Right. So if we're Abraham's children, we do the work that he did. It's how? By faith. So when you tithe, it's not a prescription of the law. Yeah. It's a heartfelt, I have had a victory. Mm-hmm. I worked this week. I got a paycheck. That's yeah. a victory. And yeah. I want to share with the representative of God, the yeah. church. Right. right? Not not just the pastor. The yeah. church is the body of Christ, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what funds ministries. And people oftentimes don't realize, man, these ministries, even even a great place like The Rock, we look like we've got all right. the money in the world. Right. We survive on the gifts of people. Yeah, right. Faithful people. And yeah. mostly the poor. Yeah. yeah. You know? Their generosity and their faithfulness. I mean, when I yeah. look at the average gift, mm-hmm. it, it's not in the thousands. Right. It's in the low hundreds, yeah. you know? Right. It, it, that's the average gift of people. Mm-hmm. Faithful people. But what does the Bible say? The, the, that God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in what? Right. Faith. Come on. And, and that's where circumcision, we got to cut away the religion. we got to cut away the legalism and yeah. the high horse. Yeah. 
High horse city. High horse city. Yeah, I'm going to adopt that. (laughs) That's a good one. The high horse city. We got to get off that high horse and and realize everything that we do is by faith. Your baptism, Mm -hmm. right? And and we paralleled this in the message. That's right. Yeah, you talked about that. Because Colossians does a beautiful job, chapter one, where it takes circumcision and baptism and puts them into one sentence. Mm -hmm. You know, even though it's two verses, it's really one sentence. And it parallels those two things. Baptism without a heart of faith. Yeah. It's it's just a ritual, mm-hmm. and it, it's nothing without the reality yeah. of faith. When well, we say that you you can come up a wet sinner uh, if you have it, <laughs> yeah. like like we can dunk you all day, yeah. and it, it it will mean nothing. It was a religious uh, ritual, which is why I know we've had parents ask us to baptize their young children because to the parents they think it's going to do something, right? And what we know that by faith you know, it, it, it is nothing, you know, I don't, God's not looking at that. Oh my God. Well, they got dunked. Right. Right. It's because it, it speaks to, and there, the po- there's positive in that because it, we want, we want the fruit of something. You don't, you don't want the fruit of something that you didn't, that you don't know what was planted, mm-hmm. right? You don't just go pick up random fruits that you don't know exactly what it is. It could be harmful. And so when we plant in, in faith in the seed, we know what's going to come out exactly. of that. And we can reap, reap the benefits of that. And so, you know, again, so that cutting away, Pastor, I think that was one of my questions is uh, f- for for us listening today and after the fact, you know, you, you talked about the cutting away and you even s- talked about what we can do in our daily life uh, that would be acts of faith for us. Uh, and I know you're going to get into some of the how to's yeah. this week, but even our, our mental approach, you know, when we wake up and we want to. All right. How do I live by faith today? How, m- how am I cutting away from my? how do I distinguish between what is faith? And what is ritual? Well, maybe what are, are are there any things that we could look out for? Well, for, it, since it's a sermon rewind rather yeah. than a foreshadowing, right. I, yeah. I don't want to get into some of those things. Um, but uh, just to just to stay stay with the message where we were, yeah. um, the two things that I would suggest that people look out for: number one is is this a faith action? That's good, right? Is this being produced from faith? Is it or is it being produced from just religion yeah, or ritual? Right um, now. Understand that duty can be done in faith, right? Yeah. I know that I need to read my Bible. Mm-hmm. I know that I need to pray. I know that I need to go to church. And yeah. there's times where I'm not going to feel like it. I'm not going to be Mr. Faith Man, yeah. you know, when I get out of bed in the morning and I got to get up and get dressed and go to church. Yeah. Uh, it may be that I feel mm-hmm. sick or I feel tired or yeah. I feel whatever. And, and it's going to be a faith step to go against what I feel. Yeah to be able to step out and do my duty as a Christian to know what I need to do. Uh, Giving money away Mm -hmm. is not pleasant to the flesh. I need this money. Everything costs so much, and yet I'm being prompted to share this money. I'm not always going to feel like it, but the faith step says, I'm going to do my duty as a Christian to reach out to help someone, even loving the unlovable. There's Mm -hmm. times where we're duty-bound to love the unlovable. It's not going to be pleasant to our flesh because, gosh, I hate that guy or yeah. what, you know, whatever it is. Right. I don't want to pray for them, you know, and, and we're supposed to pray for our leaders. Well, I don't agree with our leaders, you know. It's going to be a faith step yeah. to be able to step out when I don't feel like it, mm-hmm. right? right? So I think that's where when we say religion and ritual, uh, you know, people think that that's void of feeling. But then when the feelings are in opposition— yeah. We have to, by faith, yeah. step out and do the things that we know that God has called us to do. That will help us to cut away the flesh oh, yes, that so says, yeah. right? That says, man, I'm not praying for that guy. Because it's probably not even cutting away until it feels opposition. Uh, right? uh, well, <laughs> cutting is painful, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And and, uh, and that's where we have to remember that it's going to be painful. But if, if we'll have that precision mm-hmm. to divide. And, and you know, the, the main thing when I think about this, the, the word divide uh, just popped in Hebrews. Um where it says that the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, Yeah. right? And it, and it divides the bone and marrow, mm-hmm. which if you've ever cut open a bone, what's the bone and what's the marrow? It's right. very hard to determine. Right. I yeah. know that the marrow is like dead center, yeah. but where does it stop being marrow and when right. does it start being bone? Yeah. It's very hard to discern, Yeah. okay? But then it goes on to say soul and spirit, which oftentimes when you take a look at the Bible, at the soul and at the spirit, it's hard to determine, well, wait, hold on. Yeah. Where does one stop and where does the other mm-hmm. start, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, there's a connection there, yeah. something that's there, but it's only the Word of God that can that can divide that. So when we talk about that circumcision of the heart, yeah. right? Precision. Because the heart yeah. is where the soul and spirit reside. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's the seat, mm-hmm. if you will, that those yeah. parts of our being rest. Yeah. And that's where the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us is in our hearts mm-hmm. right and so this great exchange has happened where we've given god all of our heart and life 
God's come into our heart now. Yeah. We've had we've made that exchange, but that's where the Holy Spirit comes and lives is, and dwells is mm-hmm. in our spirit. We're seated with Christ, and He's seated in our hearts on the throne, right? right. So now, when we're cutting away the flesh, mm-hmm. okay, because we still have a mind, yeah, we we have to purpose, and this is this is I, I think I said this in the in the message. This is where the rest of the book starts to explain this process. Yeah, I mean six, seven, and eight is yeah. like a master class, right? Absolutely on on how this all specifically works mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. of overcoming the flesh, yeah, cutting away the flesh, right? So we're introduced to this topic that all of us want, right? right? If I could master my appetites and desires mm-hmm. in my flesh, man, I, I could be perfect, right? Right. right? But that's the struggle that every Christian has. And so we have to take the sword of the Spirit, mm-hmm. which is the Word of God, and cut. Yeah. That, that, that's where we say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do what God said. Yeah. Right? No matter how my flesh feels, I'm, I'm cutting away the flesh. Yeah. I, I know I don't want to go to church. I know I don't want to do that. But by faith... Yeah. Because the Bible says to gather, I, I don't want to tithe, but but by faith, because God says. Yeah. Now, now, once you start tithing, once you start going to church, and once you start doing the things, e- even outreach and things like that, mm-hmm. once you start doing those things, the feelings follow. Right. It's amazing That's to me, right. you That's know, because right. I'm excited to give. Right. Why? Because I'm blessed. Right. right. And I've seen the benefit of it. Right. I, I'm excited to pray mm-hmm. because I love spending time with God. Right. I, I love going to church. Right. Right, I love worship. I love the corporate anointing. Right. I love the blessing that uh, of seeing Jesus move in the midst of His people. Yeah, the feelings follow. That's good. But but oftentimes it starts with that that precision cut that says, yeah. "No, the Bible says." Right. And so I'm going to cut the flesh away. So you cut away, get into the groove where it feels comfortable, but there will be times when you don't want to go. Uh, yeah. Something that you love doing has now become difficult, which maybe are signs for us that. You know, some of that flesh is Time starting to come up, and we've got to get a cut and identify what this, these challenges are. Yeah. Um, and that's where the going through the motion. Let me let me give you a case in point. Maybe you can dissect this for me. Gotcha. Um, as, a, as a rule for myself, I found myself uh, waking up, and first thing to do was jumping on my phone or, you mm-hmm. know, searching or, you know, uh, wanting to updates on or looking at my notifications, which took me down rabbit trails. Sure. So as a rule, as a discipline for myself, I knew I wanted to prioritize time with Jesus. Mm-hmm. Right? I heard it was a good thing to do. Right. Sure. So here comes a, a religious rule or ritual. But for myself, the heart was of faith. Yeah. So what I did as a discipline was the first thing I'm going to do uh, or bef- the, f- the first time I open my phone is going to be for the Bible. Right. So yeah. the, the, the Bible app and I'm at least going to do the word of the or the verse of the day, if not see where that takes me. Um, so now in, in my, my your phone knows you. Right. So you open it and it'll it'll kind of let you know what you're probably going to do. And so I open my Bible uh, and I read the verse of the day and sometimes w- re- watch the video that's there. And sometimes now you can pop it up and read the whole chapter, which might. But there are some days that is just like, OK, Check that box. Sure. Now let me go on to social media or scroll news or go through emails or these other notifications. And so I found that what started as a an act of faith and as a spiritual discipline in myself to prioritize time with Jesus, to prioritize not letting the first voice I hear be outside voices, right. which was my flesh wanting to do. Um, but now there was this line there and there's the cutting away. And so when I see that my heart is doing that and checking the box. I really have to, okay, what, what's going on? Let me identify what's doing that for today. And, uh, oh, I, I see this streak number. And then and your flesh likes streaks. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when, actually, I, I had a streak of like 500 and some days. Wow. I go away um, for missions. And um, uh, because I lost a day on the time, I lost my streak. Oh man! And I was so upset, like oh, like if it, you know, like if God's, you know, <laughs> but if you're gonna lose a streak, that's <laughs> right. the way to lose it, right? I was yeah, on the no, mission I, field. I know. Oh, because I, you, we literally lost a day. Yeah. And so I didn't check my read my Bible that day. So, yeah. but anyways, uh, maybe that as a case study of, of of looking into that, there can be some good in there, and then there can be I see my flesh, and, and that's where only your heart is going to know. Right. Uh, and and sometimes you know God will point that out to you mm-hmm. because we ignore. Right. Some of those those signs, you know, that that it's I mean, we, we, we live in such a rush time. Mm-hmm. We live in such a distracted time. Like you said, yeah. you know, it's easy to go down rabbit trails. Yeah. Even in prayer, mm-hmm. you know, there's times yeah. where we're praying. 
our mind will wander because we're praying about an issue and then we start yeah. thinking about the issue rather than praying. Yeah, that's good. And so, um, you know, it, it's easy to go down those things and that's where we have to be intentional mm -hmm. when we realize it and recognize it or when God brings it to us to, uh, to cut that thing away, you know, to repent of those things and to make sure that we're, we're following the things in faith, Yeah, you know, and, and, you know, I, I mentioned there were two things that, w that I would say from the message. The first one was faith. The second one was finding the praises of God, right? Yeah. What, what is the, the aim of our lives, if not that at the end of all of it, that when we stand before God, there mm -hmm. is a reward, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and not because we're seeking the reward apart from God. Uh, obviously, God told Abraham, I am your exceedingly great reward, yeah. right? Yeah. He, uh, when we hear, enter into the joy of your Lord, mm -hmm. It's the joy of our Lord. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it's, it's him. Mm -hmm. He's the reward. He's the one. And so uh, eternity is going to be such a reward. And so we all want to hear that, that statement, well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah. And I think that's where if we are intentional with that cutting away, mm -hmm. when we take a look at our lives, that, that there's going to be that well done. Mm -hmm. You know, anything that we lose here on this earth, we're going to gain so much more in eternity. Right. And that's why we don't seek the, the things where moth and rust can destroy, but we seek those right. things above, and yeah. we seek where thieves yeah. can't come in and steal, and moths and rust can't destroy. Yeah. Uh, our treasure is doing the will of God, you right. know? And we make that our treasure because we know that there's going to be a reward, mm -hmm. right? And, and and so that's where, when we're taking a look at things like our reading the verse of the day yeah. or our time with God in the morning, that mm -hmm. sort of a thing, we, we have to recognize the reward is, this is my time with God, mm -hmm. you know? This is not... Uh, a trivial thing, you know? That's right. um, I'm not here to please my flesh. I'm not here to please myself. I'm here yeah. to please God. Mm -hmm. My whole life is laid down to please God, yeah. you know? And I think when we, when we transition our thinking in that way, it opens the door to a whole lot more because when you're reading the Scriptures now, okay, you know, many people read in if I could use the term selfishly, yeah. right? Yeah. How can I benefit from this? Which is, you know, definitely God includes benefits too. You know, right. it, of course. Uh, the classic one is tithing. Mm -hmm. If you tithe, I'll open the windows of, windows of heaven. So the motivation right. becomes, right. well, hey, there's a blessing coming, right? Yeah. Okay, that's great. But at the same time, Abraham wasn't looking for right. the windows of heaven. He didn't mm -hmm. have that scripture. Right. Right? Yeah. That came hundreds of years later. Yeah. But Abraham, why did he tithe? To be a blessing. Right. He wanted to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. And then Hebrews tells us, Truly, the lesser is blessed by the greater. What happened? The promise of yeah. tithing happened, right? Yeah, right? Because Melchizedek blessed Abraham, and he said, truly, the lesser, speaking of Abraham, was yeah. blessed by the greater. That's another reason why people think it was Jesus, right. because was Abraham was great, right? Right. right? And to the Jewish mind... To identify him as lesser... This is the father, yeah. right? This, yeah. yeah he, he would, somebody would have to be something very special right. to bless Abraham. Well, mm -hmm. Melchizedek blessed Abraham, and the lesser was blessed by the greater. Mm -hmm. So here Abraham blesses Melchizedek, so to speak, with a tithe. Yeah. Melchizedek turns around and blesses Abraham. Mm -hmm. So we see the reward yeah. that came right after the faithful act. Right. Right? And I think that's where if we have the heart like Abraham had, mm -hmm. that, that, that didn't have the scripture, but just, A, we had a victory, yeah. and here I am, and I want to bless you. You know? The, the reward coming back, I mean, it's crazy. Uh, Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, right? Yeah, right? Queen of Sheba comes to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Yeah. She comes, she brings all kinds of gifts, and it says there wasn't stuff like this anywhere. Yeah. Okay? She, she brought it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the wealth, all that, yeah. All that kind of stuff. And it says that Solomon turned around and blessed her much more than she blessed him. Right. Her breath was taken away. She, I mean, she saw everything, yeah. and, and her breath was taken away. And she gave Solomon a gift, and it says he turned around and he blessed her. Like, you, yeah. oh, you thought that was good? <laughs> Let me show you what yeah. a real blessing is. Right. Like, and I think that's us with God. When we cut away the flesh mm -hmm. and when we start to live a life that says, I want to receive my praise from God, not from man, right? right? This is not reli – religion will want to look good to man. That's right. Right? A lot of times people are on the high horse, and they're looking around for who else? Right. Who's, who's on the other horse? I, yeah. I want to see – Yeah. Where where they yeah. are, are they happy that I'm look I yeah. got them you know yeah. and and it's to be praised mm -hmm. by man but if we're looking for the praises of God yeah right we're saying okay God I'm gonna bless your name I'm gonna praise yep. I'm gonna worship uh, I'm gonna give I'm gonna right. serve I'm gonna right. read my Bible I'm gonna listen for your voice right I'm gonna pray to you God God just turns around oh you think that's good mm -hmm. 
Yep. Let me give you myself. Bang. Yeah. And it's like our breath's going to be taken away. Well, if you think if we stay in a perpetual posture, yeah, of praise, yeah, that yeah, liberation there, then we can't even identify, or we're not even looking around to see if anyone's looking at us. For sure. Right, because we are remaining and dwelling with God, and looking for His to please Him. Absolutely. And then I don't have to worry about who's identifying what within me. Yeah. Uh, and the fruit of my life will speak for that, not how cool my religion looks. Oh, yeah. Oh, right? yeah. And uh, oftentimes I know we, we want to posture our, you know, hey, you know, I read the verse of the day. Look at my streak. <laughs> I'm really holy and spiritual, which but I could have not read anything else on. those. And so I and, and I one of the tests I do is like, do I remember the verse? Mm. What did it like? Or did I because that, that will identify. Yeah. Did I just read it? Did I read and it? And I got it my street number. I checked the box today. Yeah. Or I didn't. E- so I can even tell you what the verse was today. Those are th- th- those are markers for me. Sure. Um, but if I am doing it as a way to praise and connect and, and follow Jesus, then I'm not concerned whether I, I lose the day or if someone's yeah. read more than me. Um, and, and those are gauges that we can identify within ourselves. Right. Right. Are, are right. The things that we are going about that make us feel spiritual. Are they actually f- to please God or to please man? And if we're doing it for this praising of the praises of God, then man, we'll really see the fruit of that in our life. For sure. Which I think sure. we all want to do. We all we want to please God and we want to live a fruitful life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We all have that desire on the inside of us as Christians, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's built in. Every every child wants to please their parents. Mm-hmm. They want to please their father. Even if even if we find people that have bad parents or yeah. abusive parents, that sort of thing, there's still something in them. That wants to please their parents, and and the good expression of that yeah. in our Christianity, in our faith, if I could say it that way, is that we want to please the Father. Yeah, and and it's not in a a weird twisted way or anything like that, because you know the when we get the flesh involved again, yeah. it's going to be distorted. Mm-hmm. I want to please God, you know, yeah. because it's it's the religious thing to do. Yeah, no, no, I want to please God because I love Him. That's good, and because He loves me. That's good. Well, closing, Pastor Dan, what are maybe a couple markers or things that of a circumcised heart? Hmm. Wow. That's a great question. Um, markers. I, th- I think that when you take a look at, at uh, what we see, the biblical examples, mm-hmm. right? You can see the markers is, is that religion is not the emphasis mm-hmm. and the focus, right? It's it's not That's about good. those things. Um, I I think a good, for instance, I had someone come to the back door and they said, you know, I was baptized when I was younger, but I made a rededication. Should I get baptized again? Yeah. And my response to them was, well, what's in your heart? Yeah. You know, it's not about the bap. If if you were truly meaning it when you were baptized the first time and you just needed to make a rededication because you wandered away and you were repenting. Yeah. You don't need to get baptized again. But if your heart says, I want to get baptized again, along with my rededication, because I want to show the world I'm living for Jesus, yeah. because I wandered and now I've come back and I rededicated. And so part of that rededication is I want to go and get baptized again. You know, if it was a, just a religious ritual, yeah. one time, that's it. Right. Right. But, but if it's more about the heart, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that you'll you'll see those markers in people's lives when when they're encountering something yeah. in life. You yeah. know, uh, those those would be the markers like I, I can tell that person has cut away the flesh, you That's know, good. Yeah. Um, I- as well as you can see people that deny their flesh. Uh, there's times where you'll find people that, you know, they're they're. You, you won't even know they're fasting until you offer yeah. them something, yeah. you know, like yeah. hey, you want. Th-? And they're like, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, yeah. 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 you know, yeah. and, and why, why not? You know, yeah. oh. And, and, and you almost got to bend their yeah. arm back <laughs> fasting, you know, yeah, yeah. It, but but that's where Jesus talked about the hypocrites who who make their face. Oh, yeah, I'm fasting. Oh, my stomach hurts so bad. <laughs> and, and what did Jesus say? He said, take yeah. a shower, put oil on your head, right. you know, like comb your hair, brush right. your teeth. Yeah. And, and don't let people know, because, again, they're seeking the reward. Great is your reward. Your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you, you don't find people boasting about, man, I was praying for hours today. That that's not the marker of a circumcised life. The marker of a circumcised life yeah. is, is hey, what were you doing? Yeah. Oh, I was praying yeah. that whole time. Right. 
Yes. Right. Yeah. You, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like th- that's the market because it's not about being seen by man. It's about what God Good. sees mm-hmm. and, and seeking that reward. Yeah. Well, and I love, I mean, it, we've talked about this before where you can, Pastor Jess is like, you can tell when someone spent time with God. Absolutely. And it's that has nothing to do with what they said. Right. It's, it's because it's not because they memorize the scripture. Is it because it comes out of them? They're For living sure. it. Sure. It's not because they pray long and they sound spiritual. It's because the way their heart connects to Jesus when they're praying. Well, think about the two examples of that in the Bible. First, you got Moses who mm-hmm. spent time with God. When he came out, his yes. face literally shone. He right. was radiant. Yes. Right. You can tell someone's mm-hmm. countenance. Yes. There have been times I've been in the store mm-hmm. and people come up to me. Are you a Christian? Right. And it's like. Yes, <laughs> you know, and they're like, yeah. I can see Jesus yeah. all over you, yeah. you know, right? And and that's one of the greatest compliments Absolutely. I've ever had. Absolutely, you know. Yeah. And I've done that to other people too. Right. When I've seen them, I've yeah. been like, "You're a Christian, aren't you?" Yeah. And they're like, "Yeah, <laughs> how'd you know?" I'm like, "I can see yeah. Jesus." Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then the the second example is in the Book of Acts when the apostles are talking to the Sanhedrin and they're like, you know, given it, and and it says that they recognized that yes. they were with Jesus yep. by what, like you said, mm-hmm. what was coming out of them. Yes. Again, markers of a circumcised heart. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're going to see it on them, yep. or it's going to come out of them. Yeah, so good, Pastor. I think that was well said. <laughs> come on. <laughs> and uh, you know what? You would wrap it up. Wait, so. le- hey. <laughs> Got to sandwich it. <laughs> Great job. Pastor Dan, thank you so much. We're looking forward to this week where we're going to get into some of the, uh, well, I guess it would be, is it, would you say how to's or what would you? Well, we'll see what we come okay. up with. You know, All I got to, right. I got to pray and figure yeah. that out. And, uh, you know, I, I know that God will, will, uh, you know, Draw yeah. that out of the well, the deep well, waters. Well, stay tuned, and uh, we will see you next time again. Share, like, subscribe, comment. This is Supplemental. If you haven't heard the message yet, go back, hear the message, and we'll see you soon. God bless you guys. Love you.